Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're listening in from. I hope you're having a fantastic day, morning, night, whatever it may be. We're here on another beautiful Tuesday, Trading Tuesday. <clears throat> We're going to hopefully talk about some mindset to help some traders change, change some of the things they may have been doing or self-evaluate in order to change some of the things they think they may be doing. And yes, they are different. But before we get into that, as per usual, I'd like to start with some gratitude. So please, as people keep rolling into the chats here, can you share with me your gratitude for today, for yesterday, something or someone that put a smile on your dial, maybe made your day a little bit better, or even if you're having a really shitty day, try and find something in your past that has brought light to your day and think about that because this will hopefully change our mindset from a negative one to a positive one and get us in a forward and let's say more uplifting vibration. We've got some people into the chat here. It's really cold here and I have and I was having trouble getting out of bed. So I'm grateful for each of you. Thanks for your pleasant and chipper personality here on Zoom to wake up to. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I haven't heard chipper in a while. I like that one. I'll take that any day of the week. I'm very grateful for nice comments. That's that's for sure. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Everybody, chuck in some gratitude. The whole point of this morning call is to practice gratitude, to actually get involved, do the work, not just to sit and be a bystander. If you're showing up into these calls in the morning, I'm super grateful for it. I love you all who show up here, who have input and who get involved. But I do ask you to do your bit because these calls are for all of us to learn, to grow and develop. And if you're just sitting as a bystander, you won't be making those changes, all of the stuff we're going to be talking about today. So if you've been on this call for the three or so weeks that we've been running and you haven't had an input or haven't put your gratitude in, I encourage you today to just put one or two words into the chat to share, to grow, to step out of that comfort zone. I know what I was like when I first started getting on Zoom calls, into group calls, into this kind of space. I would sit and I'd, you know, I'd, I'd say something in my own head or I might write something down on a bit of paper, but I never really got involved. And then it wasn't for a little while after um, till I got on Teresa's call. I'm very grateful for this lovely, lovely lady um, where I started to interact more and engage and get involved and comment and share and ask questions. And from then, I really started to grow and develop and change and discover who I was and where I wanted to go and this kind of... I suppose, developed and was the catalyst for me getting to where I am now. You know, a year later, I've got my own call. I've got people coming here frequently listening and trying to learn from the bits that I have to share. And I'm super grateful for the evolution of my journey um, just over the last year, let alone the last two or three years. So today, I'm also grateful for myself. I'm grateful for facing my fears. I'm grateful for stepping outside of my comfort zone. I'm grateful for having failed so many times that I've gotten to this point where, as I discussed yesterday, even my failures now to me seem so impressive to what they would have been years ago. So I encourage you that if this is your first time writing into the chat, just go for it. No one's here to judge. No one's here to question. We're all here to grow and develop. And it could be the comment that starts you off on your journey of growth and development and change. So with that, I'm going to read through some of these comments because I've seen a bunch more come through as I was saying that. Um, we have, I'm really grateful for opportunity for change. I'm grateful for my really big, warm, friendly dog. Oh, I'm so jealous. I used to have such a big... German Shepherd Weimaran across who used to sleep in my bed. He was my best friend since I was nine years old, had him for 17 years. And unfortunately, he lived out his days and we parted ways. Um, but I missed having my dog in my bed. It was one of the best things ever. So he completely caught me off guard and went on a tangent there. But oh, I loved having a big dog and being a traveler. It's not being that easy. But now that I'm starting to settle down, I'm getting very antsy about wanting to get another pet. So um, give him a big cuddle for me because I miss having my dog next to me. Um, finishing off, big, warm, friendly dog who gives love and joy unconditionally to everyone he meets. 
we can all learn some lessons from our animals. That is so true. I think the definition of unconditional love is exactly what a dog provides. I mean, it's kind of not, we take care of them really well, but still they, they will love you regardless of what you do, how you behave, or if you make mistakes and it's absolutely incredible. I'm grateful for healthy relationships and for open and honest conversation. That's great. I'm grateful for vision and I'm grateful for vision and for this daily mindset session. I'm grateful for you being on here. I'm grateful to be able to attend these calls, even when I'm not always feeling it. Sometimes you all remind me of the great parts of my life when I may not see it. That is such a good point to have, because honestly, that right there, that comment shows me that you are going to be really be able to push some boundaries because so many people have opportunities that they only attend to when they're feeling like it. It takes a whole new character to get up and do the things that grow you as a person when you're feeling like shit or when you're having a crappy day. If you can still get up out of bed, shrug off the negativity and just go do the things or just be present in a place that's going to grow you while you're feeling shitty or while you're having bad days or while you're struggling, then that shows great gumption and great resilience and the fact that you will hopefully grow faster and stronger than most who decide that I'm not feeling it. I'm just going to roll back over and go to sleep. So good on you for being here on those days. I'm grateful for the universe for putting amazing people in my path. Yeah, isn't it a great feeling? I'm grateful for being a business owner, choosing to be independent and organizing my own work and personal day, deciding what work needs to be done when, I am grateful for my husband, my family, my health. I am also grateful for my positive mindset. Gets me through the challenging days. Grateful for all the giving, helpful people in my life. That's awesome. It's so nice to have a community and support that are going to push you and, and drive you through those challenging times, through those harder days. I'm sure you've all heard the saying, you know, you are the sum of the five people you spend most of your time with. Well, put yourself in mindset calls. Put yourself on calls, trading calls with millionaires and just see what happens because if you spend a lot of your time and day surrounding yourself by people who are aimed at bettering themselves and you, it's just kind of a game of time before you become the person you want. And I think just to add to that, the ability to fail, and I've said this multiple times and I'll say it multiple more, the ability to fail and fail and fail again without losing the enthusiasm. Now, don't get me wrong, you can find discouragement and you can be disheartened and you can be set back. But the key here is to fail and then refine that enthusiasm every single time. And if you can do that, you're basically going to be unstoppable. And it's hard sometimes. Sometimes you fail like 15 times. You're like, I'm not getting anywhere. <laughs> Why? Right? Put some ones in the chat if you've had that feeling of like failing for the 15th time. You've gone, oh, fuck. Why again? <laughs> like, seriously. Yep. Ones, ones, ones. Okay, we got a few people because I have felt that frustration so many times, more than once. Yeah, God, it gets me. It winds me up sometimes. And this is kind of um, a little bit about what I want to talk about today in the concept of change. Okay, so we were talking about yesterday what it costs, um, what your limiting beliefs have cost and what it's going to cost you in the future and what it's going to cost you if you don't change compared to what you'll gain if you do change, right? And I've just got a little bit more gratitude in here. So I'm just going to read that out before we move on because I love that people keep sharing. I'm grateful for the amazing people in my life, my fiance, my friends, my family, and my friends who've become family. Love that. And for this wonderful community I've found on my trading journey. I'm also grateful for all my success and all my failures. Yeah, you have to be grateful for your failures as well. I always say on days like that, Tomorrow is a new day and a fresh start. It really is. Like <laughs> this is goes back to that perspective kind of thing. We get so, I personally have found myself getting so wound up in the exact moment. And I say live in the moment, but at the same time, I'm contradicting what I say here by saying you get so wound up in the failure of this current situation or this one losing trade, for example, and it brings so much emotion and so much frustration or all these thoughts. But then, like I was saying Last week, zoom out. Look at the whole trading journey. Look at your trading journey as a whole. You're not here for two, three months. You know, one day out of two, three months is a substantial amount. One day out of 
10, 15, 20, hopefully the rest of your life because you're going to trade because it's going to create financial freedom and you're going to have this to access as much money as you want for the rest of your life. One day is fuck all, right? One trade in your trading history is almost insignificant. So why do we allow ourselves to get so wound up and so frustrated and so, I guess, irate sometimes me we're talking about this yesterday flicking the screen throwing your phone all the emotions that come with those frustrating trading days like this emotion builds up so strong but it's just one trade it's just one day and if you've been in this game long enough and not learned from your lessons it's just one blown account <laughs> maybe it's another but in the scheme of things zoom out right zoom out and realize that these are all stages where you can take lessons these are all stages where you can grow, where you can develop, and where you can change. Now, the issue is when we don't change, when we don't learn, when we don't grow, and we don't develop. And I think this is the key defining factor between what makes a trader and what makes another stat. One of those other 95% of people who lose money trading. I mean, the way these things are phrased, everyone fucking loses money when they're trading. <laughs> this part of it. You take a loss. You've lost money. End of end of story. Like it's it, it's part of the trading. So these stats are a bit, how do you say, far-fetched, I'm going to go with. But my point is, in order to become a long-term profitable trader, you have to be willing to fail and you have to be willing to take lessons. This is why you'll often hear me say, I don't take losses, I take lessons. Because every time you lose on the charts, you should be self-analyzing. You should be self-evaluating. You should be looking back and going, what can I do better? What could I have done differently? And sometimes you'll find, you know what? I couldn't have done anything better. That was exactly how my trading plan plays out. And this time it just didn't work. And that is okay as well. And in fact, when you can do that and look at your charts, back test, go over your trades and self-evaluate and go, you know what? I would have taken that trade again. That's a really empowering feeling. I had that just the other day. I took a lot. Actually, yesterday, I took a loss. I was going back and I was like, okay, what could I have done differently? What could I have found here? And I was like, you know what? I probably would take that trade again. I exited with a small loss, but it just turned around and didn't go my way. And that shows the growth and development and the change. But my main point for today is when we're talking about what is it going to cost you, to not change your life, your limiting beliefs, your values? What is it going to cost you to not change your habits on the charts? What is it going to cost you to not change how you respond to your emotions? I want you to ask yourself these two questions. What is it going to cost you if you don't change your habits on the charts? And what is it going to cost you if you don't change how you respond to your emotions. Because in the end of the day, emotions are the number one reason that I believe we fail. I've said this many, many times. Because you can have a great week and then you have a loss. And what happens? Emotions take over. You revenge trade. You over trade. You emotionally trade. You over leverage. All of these things. And then you can lose your whole week in matter of a day so why is trading one of the most one of the best um personal development programs ever well i think it's because it's just relentless and in order to make it in order to grow you have to self-evaluate this is what i'm talking about you have to spend that time after every session tracking evaluating your trades understanding yourself but more importantly tracking your emotions evaluating emotions and understanding yourself and you can hear my words and ignore them that's fine by me but i can tell you that for the first year and a half of my trading journey i heard this and i ignored it just because i thought i didn't need to and that's that's fine I took a lot of losses and I still learned along the way. But when I started to actually go, right, I need change. And I stopped and made myself the decision. I'm like, you know what? I'm sick and fucking tired of losing money. 
and I'm sick and tired of spending time on these charts and not really making any difference, I need to make change. What is it going to cost you if you don't change? So what did I do? I said, why not just try to do the things that the people tell me to do and see what happens? So I started tracking my trades. Started realizing some very common mishaps I didn't even know existed. Like, for example, if I felt like if I was hoping the trade would go in one direction and it didn't, about seven out of 10 trades, I would hit the button again just to re-enter because I was so sure that I was going to be right. And that usually ended up in two or three losses. And I didn't even realize I was doing this, but through tracking, I found this out. Then I started tracking my emotions and realizing that, man, I'm an emotional person <laughs> and I need to get this shit under control in order to make that step forward, in order to stop that day where I smash the button, revenge trade, give up all my profits for the week and start to minimize um, those losses. So I want to ask you again, you know, what is it going to cost you if you do not change your behaviors and habits on the charts? And what is it going to cost you if you do not get your emotions under apps? Is it making sense to some people? Can some people relate? Matter of fact, put a one in the chart. Put a one in the chat if you are tracking and evaluating. Put a two in the chat if you are the person who's here is being told to put tracking into action and you just ignore it every single time and put a three in the chat if you just haven't heard about it don't do it and don't really care and all are fine okay we've got lots of people who are tracking good and i'd assume that most of the people started as a two <laughs> yeah don't worry so did i <laughs> i didn't do it i was like yeah i hear you but i don't need that and that was my ego and just, yeah, honestly there are days i'm a two yeah there's there's still days i'm a two um, but most of the time I'm a one. There are some days where I, I slip, but I was egotistical. I was like, I don't need to do this shit. Like I'm going to be fine. You know, I don't need to track this stuff. I can figure this out. And you know what? Over time, I probably could. The difference was, do I want to give it four or five years to do it? Or do I want to actually speed that process up, do the things the professionals say work and then become successful faster? That was, that was really what I had to ask myself. Mostly to track some days. Yeah. And you know what? Some I'm not saying all traders do, you know, I'm not saying everyone has to. I'm just saying that this helps speed up my process of learning by pointing out the flaws I didn't even realize I had. Sometimes you'll you may have heard me say this in the past. It's so hard to shift some of our limiting beliefs because they are so true to us that we don't even know they exist. So how do you change poor habits that you don't realize exist? It's almost impossible, right? It's If you don't realize there's a flaw, how can you address it and change it? Well, tracking pulls that out in front of you. When I was, story time, when I was 25, I so my father, my biological father, uh, left before I was born, uh, but I still got to know him. I'm super lucky. I had a relationship with him overseas. And then we sort of met six or seven times through our life. Uh, maybe a bit more. And then when I was 25 and I'd finished my degree and I started my travels, my very first stop was at his doorstep to surprise him and say, hello, I'm here to stay on your couch for as long as you'll let me, basically. And it was great. I had a great time. I got to know him really well. I realized him as a character. But one thing I did realize were a lot of the annoying fucking things that he did were things that I did. <laughs> and I didn't even know they were annoying until I saw him doing them to me. And so it was a complete reversal. And I was like, oh, that's so annoying when you do that. And I was like, I do that. That's what, hmm, okay, right, right. I wonder if that's something I should change. And then the same thing would happen the next day. You know, I'd be like, oh, why? It's so frustrating when you, uh, I do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, no wonder people got mad at me when I did that. I see, I see. And it, what it was, was pulling out these flaws I didn't even realize I had because my biological father, you know, nurture nature, I he, we have a lot of the same characteristics was doing them. And I was realizing how frustrating they were in the reversal. And so I was like, I didn't even know I needed to change these things. But now that I've experienced them, I should change these things. You know, and it was nothing major, just little things. But it was an eye opener, right? And what you're doing by tracking is pretty much the same thing. You're putting your habits on paper so you can't run and hide from them. You're putting your habits and behaviors in front of you for you to be able to really see what you're like from a different perspective. 
It's all about changing perspective. So you basically put your behaviors and habits onto paper. And then the key, now this is the key, is after the session going back and self-evaluating and giving yourself the time to go over it because there's no point in putting it all on paper and then going, see you later, never. And not fucking looking at them. Because if you do that, you may as well not track in the first place. But going back and seeing from a different perspective, seeing from a different state of mind, seeing from an unemotional frame, whether or not what you're doing is right, whether or not what you're doing is wrong. And sometimes you might realize that it's the simplest thing that you need to change, which is going to make the world of difference. It can be so simple. And it's just a matter of pointing out the flaws. Put some ones in the chat if you've got a best friend who will go, dude, you're a dick. Why would you say that? That's That was mean. Or, man, it's so annoying when you do this. Stop doing that. You're an idiot. Does anyone have best friends like that? Juan? Yep. I do. And I'm so grateful for them. Kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, kids. Well, sometimes, if you're lucky enough, you may have good friends who will call you out on your bullshit without fail. Right. And this, while sometimes it can be painful, it's really, really important. And what you're trying to do is find a way to call yourself out on your own bullshit from a different state of mind, from a different perspective. So it's really, really important that we track our trades and our emotions if we want to self evaluate and if you want to change. What's it going to cost you if you don't change? What's it going to cost you if you don't track, if you don't learn, and if you don't grow? What's it going to cost you? on the charts or financially, if you don't get your emotions under wrap, under wraps. And how can you do that if you're not aware of the emotions and the habits that you have? Okay. And the last thing here is why do you think people change so much with trading? Well, the one reason is because when you're trading, What's on the line? What are we risking when we trade? Chuck it in the chat. When we're on the charts and we're trading, what is it that we're actually putting at risk that we're willing to lose? Money. Exactly. We're risking our money. And the sad truth of the matter is that money is actually one of the top reasons that people have stress in their life, that divorces happen in America. Actually, well, the top reason is infidelity, lack of intimacy and communication. But the reason most people aren't talking about sex or having sex is because they're so worried about their job to put money in the account that they don't have time to be stress-free and actually enjoy the relationships of, of a long, fruitful relationship. So really, it's one of the biggest argument factors and one of the biggest reasons of divorce. And so... The reason this is, is because what does money do for us this day and age? Money provides us with a roof over our heads, warmth, clothing, food, water, a comfy place to sleep, all the human basic needs. So if we shift our perspective on this, what we're actually doing, if we're coming from a place of need, um, a, pay, a scarcity mindset, where every dollar we make on the charts we need for our basic necessities, it's going to make or break people really quickly. If you think about the fact that money is providing us with all of our basic necessities, and this is what we're risking on the charts, it's going to make you or break you. And this is the kind of state of mind that you should look at to realize how important it is to protect your capital and not just go gambling it. And if we're trying to protect our capital so that we can have our basic necessities met, then wouldn't it make sense to learn how to change our emotions and our behaviors so that we can keep more of that rather than just throw it away? Put some ones in the chat if that makes sense to you. Yeah, it sure would, right? So what I'm trying to do is get you to shift your perspective here and understand that when we're on the charts, the one thing we're actually risking is our money and we're using we're doing this so we can create a better future we're doing this so we can create more time freedom so we can create less stress about the basic necessities that we need in life and for such important things 
why would we not spend 20 minutes self-evaluating? If you put into perspective exactly what it is that you're changing in your life or that you're risking, why would you not spend 20 minutes each time self-evaluating your trades at the minimum? Like if someone told me if I'd sat down in an hour and self-evaluated, my life would be 100% different and I'd have all the food, food, clothes, shelter, sleep. Sleep's a big one for me right now with a newborn. And money that I could ever imagine. If you just spent an hour a day sitting there self-evaluating, assessing yourself and figuring out some of your flaws and some of your natural um, characteristics that could be beneficial or not and just tweak them a little bit, would you do it? Yes, of course I would. Well, that's basically where we're at in this situation with trading. On the trading journey that we've got, we have the opportunity, if we are willing to do the work, to self-evaluate, to change, to shift the person we are, to become a new person with a new identity in order to create extraordinary results that will change our life forever. And it's so important to understand this. Because I feel like a lot of people sometimes get just into the flow of trading. They just get into the routine, come in on the time, check in, they put the Zoom on or they get on a group call, they watch, they stare at the charts, maybe flick on their phone, like put some ones in the chat if you've been on the charts and scrolling through Facebook at the same time. One. Yeah, I used to do it all the time. Surprisingly, not yet. Well, that's good. That's good. Keep it that way. I used to do it all the time. And now when I do it, as soon as I find myself doing it, I still do it. But as soon as I find myself doing it, I'm off. I'm like, I came to these charts to win time so that I could spend that time with my little man and be at home, watch him grow up. If I'm sitting here just scrolling through Facebook while doing this thing, then I should not be on these charts. And this is something that I'm always growing and developing with. I'd like to not even think about it. And it's definitely few and far between the days that I do. But my point here is think about why you're here. Don't get stuck in the routine of just coming on the calls, pressing a button, getting disappointed that you're taking a loss, and then going through your day with a shitty attitude for the rest of the day because you lost money on the charts. That's not a way to live. That's not a way to trade. And it's not a way to grow. Come on here with intent. Come on here with discipline. Come on here with the want to fail forward, not just fail. You need to be willing to take lessons, not losses. Come on the charts with the intent of listening, getting involved, asking questions, doing the things that will get you ahead, tracking everything that you're doing, and then going back on your own and self-evaluating and figuring out who you are on the charts. You might find that you're a completely fucking different person when you're on the charts. I found for a phase that I would just turn into this emotional monster and just start throwing money down the drain because something would take over, right? It just didn't make sense, but it would happen. So what's it going to cost you if you don't change? What's it going to cost you if you don't spend 20 minutes self-evaluating your behaviors, your emotions? Just do the thing and it's only going to take you a year of consistently doing the thing. And I can guarantee you your life will be in a different situation. Mine has been for the last year and I've only been doing the thing for four or five months. I've only started to get my ass into gear recently and gone, you know what? If I really want this change, I'm going to start doing the thing that I'm told to do. And it's, it's working. Anyway, that's all I have for us today. My little rant on change. <laughs> but I hope that helped or clicked in someone's mind. I need to keep focused on the charts, doing one task at a time. Learned long time ago that I'm not a successful multitasker. Yeah, and honestly, multitasking is actually just spitting your focus into multiple areas. So even successful multitaskers are degrading their level of effort to the one thing that they should be focusing on. I think it was the Warren Buffett me method. I think he does like five and 20 where you put 20 things on the list that you just do not do until the top five are done. And you only work on one of the three, one of the top three of them at the same time or something along those lines. I don't know the full details, but it makes sense. Just put all your focus on one thing, get it done, get it off the list, save up some of that emotional, uh, that mental energy and move it on to something else. Anyway, what a great session. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love your rants. A great rant, Jake. Thank you. Uh, I do like ranting. Thank you for your real, real honest kicks in the butt. I do need these regularly. Yeah, that's what I'm here to do. Honestly, most of my calls 
I don't really care if I hurt people's feelings because the truth is sometimes you need to be hurt to grow and understand. And sometimes it needs to be said harshly for you to actually get the image like, whoa, check that was a bit rough. Well, hopefully that sticks with you. And hopefully it actually makes you make the change. So yeah, pardon my rawness and my language, but that's who I am and I don't plan on changing it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jake, for another great mindset session. You're more than welcome, everyone. All right, I have gone over time. Our trading session has begun. So to my traders, I will see you in just a minute and to everyone else listening on the podcast or who aren't here. Um, I love you all and I will speak to you soon. I love who you are. Thank you very much, Aaron. I love who you are too. Thanks for being so open and honest with us on these calls, especially a couple of weeks ago. Um, I love everyone's participation and group involvement. But for now, I shall see you. For now, I shall say bye and I shall see you tomorrow. <laughs> bye.